in order to really understand Evla's ideas about rites and rituals, that this will provide even more context, is we need to get on to his ideas of race, which, to his credit, he is definitely racist, but it's a different type of racism to what I'm used to. This is a, a this spiritual is not racism. racism. This is an even better type of racism. This is, <laughs> this is an interesting racism. So, <laughs> this of is a course, higher type. <laughs> of course, there is an essential hierarchy of people. And it's somewhat heritable. It appears heritable in the world of becoming, but that is really because it's... What everything we see is a consequence or a shadow of what is happening in the world of being. So one's race determines their link to the world of being from the world of becoming. And the most superior races, which for him are the pure stocks from Hyperborea and from Atlantis. Atlanteans are a bit worse. And in part two, we'll go into Hyperborea and Atlantis a bit more, both real places. Uh, this is not figurative. Uh, <laughs> they exist invisibly now, which is why you can't see them. And they both, they're the most superior because they actually can maintain this link to the world of being without any initiation, without any initiatory rites. They can just do it. Now, in inferior ages, that the, the stock has been diluted and degraded, you need initiatory rites to access the world of being, if possible at all. There are many, many people who are racially, in a spiritual sense, inferior to the point where no matter you know, how many initiation rites they undergo, they can never commune with the world of being. They can never perform a rite. Uh, it's, it's just not spiritually possible. <laughs> and the... <laughs> Why are you laughing, Jack? <laughs> hmm? Because hmm? I agree with the concept of spiritual racism <laughs> to such an extent that I can't help but laugh at it. <laughs> so the, the reason why, say, smooth brain, midwit, modern materialist racists might think that, and he included, say, Adolf Hitler among these people, might think that race is just totally heritable in the blood is because they're not seeing the world of being. So, say with castes, you shouldn't marry outside castes or reproduce outside castes, cast lines. Not because you will. there's something in the blood that will be mixed, leading to a degraded race. It's more, there's something in the blood that represents something in the world of being that you don't want being mixed. So it, it leads to a very similar place to what he would call materialist racism. But now, to it's be fair to a Evola, place. He, was, he was living in the times before we discovered uh, the double helix. And therefore, it's forgivable that he didn't know that, in fact, just like the SWAT sticker, the double helix <laughs> DNA is symbol. itself... A polar symbol <laughs> of <laughs> rotating around a center point, and in so far as different right? <laughs> different configurations <laughs> of of the DNA molecules can more truly represent the solar symbol, <laughs> you can have literally in the symbol symbolism of inside of your DNA, you can <laughs> literally have a connection to the world of being. Mm -hmm. And if that is diluted through through caste uh, mm. degradation, mixing of caste, you might, I might say, say Jack, you clearly great caste character, not, you know, as we discussed before, blue, blue head, <laughs> blonde head, blue, blue eyes. <laughs> Whatever the hyperboreans uh, look like. But still, still pretty good. Still pretty good. <laughs> uh, but the reason why you are the way you are is not on a physical level, but on a spiritual level. is because somewhere back in your ancestry, somebody who had a worse symbol in their DNA mixed with somebody who had a better symbol in their DNA. And you've now lost your connection to that caste. And an important thing is too, is initiation. So this is where... This is one of the biggest departures he has from, from materialist racism is that we'll talk about initiatory rights in a second because they're really important. But 
an initiatory rite ontologically transforms you and connects you to the this world of being. Bit. And this is this is it, it, it's heritable in a spiritual sense. So your children will have this ability too. Um, that this superiority like awakened in you by an initiatory rite. And he says, having entered into the bloodstream as some sort of transcendent legacy, this quality would become the characteristic feature of a race that is activated in individuals by the rite of initiation. So you can change race in the sense that if you are already... Like, you, you have to be superior enough to be able to undergo an initiatory rite. But yeah. so long as you are, you can actually be... You can ascend in race if you're initiated. Yeah, this is like uh, the Jedi. The mid <laughs> The mid The mid <laughs> Evola is pro midi chlorian. It is interesting. At several points in this book, he does denounce, say, the racism of... The, the early and mid 20th century, where he says, Blood and ethnic purity are factors that are valued in traditional civilizations too. Their value, however, never justifies the employment, in the case of human beings, of the same criteria employed to ascertain the presence of pure blood in a dog or in a horse, as is the case in some modern racist ideologies. Because he views those as secondary effects. He talks about how... Yeah. If you just breed people like you would breed horses, then at very best, you will get a race of beautiful beings only fit for work. You're never going to get the spiritual dimension. So you will, your race will degrade, but maybe more slowly than if people were allowed to mix without any constraints. But you're still, you're still not getting the spiritual aspect. Oh, here we go. Well, this is the quote. He says... If men are treated like rabbits or stallions, their unions being carefully and rationally planned, let no one be fooled. What they will generate will either be a civilization of very beautiful animals destined to work, or, if the individualistic and utilitarian element predominates, a stronger law will lead the races towards the path of regression or extinction, according to the same inexorability of the law of entropy and the degradation of energy. So he, uh... Evola's racism is interesting. It's not like Varg where he just says white people are great and blonde hair and blue eyes are greater. He, um, he's got a spirituality. He's a spiritual racist. I like it.